Hi everybody, uh, my name is Brett Berry. I am from Zinc Calls, AvianX decoy line. Um, I am the, I'm here to do a demonstration on uh, fall turkey hunting. I brought one of my turkey dogs down with me to, to show everybody and just give you guys an idea of how fall turkey hunting works with dogs. Um, this is Kinsey. She's one of three that I have. Uh, she comes from a bloodline out of Kentucky that uh, is a cross between English Setter, English Pointer, and Gordon Setters. I've got two other turkey dogs at home that are out of the Burns bloodline that come out of Lowry, Virginia. Um, they are English Setter, English Pointer, Bloodhound mixes. Um, how many people here are fall turkey hunters? How many he people here are fall turkey hunting with dogs? Have you ever fall turkey hunting with dogs? You have? <laughs> uh, Generally, when you're fall turkey hunting, how do you do it? Just try to call in the flock, or do you try and break them up? Break them up. Um, basically, a little bit of history on me. I'm from Ohio, uh, and the county that I live in, we, we probably about 15 years ago had our first fall season. The first fall season that I ever, that I ever participated in and was able to hunt was uh, I patterned a flock of turkeys to a feed source, and I went in, set up on it, you know, before or early in the afternoon and did a little bit of calling and ended up calling the flock in and I shot a bird. There was a little bit of calling, a little bit of interaction with the birds. It was, it was pretty neat. I had started reading some articles about fall turkey hunting with dogs uh, in a turkey and turkey hunting magazine and was kind of getting interested because I, well, I always grew up, we always had bird dogs. We always had pheasant, grouse. Uh, back then when I was a kid, we had quail in Ohio. We were able to hunt quail. So I was real interested in learning more about it. Um, the second year that I fall turkey hunted, I hadn't got a dog yet. I had put my name on a waiting list for uh, the bloodline out of Virginia. It was about a year, year and a half waiting list to get a dog from them. And uh, I had a flock of turkeys that I had patterned to a roost area. Uh, we were in there bow hunting and the, the night before the flock flew up to roost. So I went back the next morning and just as it was getting daylight, we broke the flock off the roost and scattered them all over the place. And um, I sat up and I did not kill a bird that morning, but something that I had never got to hear before was all that. I've been, I had been a spring turkey hunter for quite a few years, but I had never heard kikis. I never heard whistles. I had uh, never heard a, a long, hard assembly yelping. Um, that morning I heard everything, goblin. Uh, it, it was just incredible. I did not kill a bird that morning, but that just, I didn't get a real good break on the birds. And that just made me think that really what I need is, I needed a dog. That following spring, uh, I got a phone call from uh, Mr. John Burns down in Lowry, Virginia, saying my puppy had been born. And I went down and pick, picked uh, her up and brought her home and started the training process with her. He told me to just introduce her to turkeys and drag turkey wings around the yard. and hide turkey wings and let her play with them and chew them up and tear them up and that's what I did for that whole summer. Um, the way it works with, with turkey dogs is we'll just walk down through the woods and most generally with the guys that I take, I don't let anybody load their gun when we get out of the truck. We'll go into uh, a woods that I've scouted that I know has turkeys and um, one of the big things about fall turkey hunting with a dog is and, and even in general, Paul Turkham is knowing the flock composition of when you're that flock that you break up. Uh, and scouting, doing a lot of scouting, scouting from the road with binoculars, uh, walking through the woods and looking at the sign that you're seeing. You can tell from the tracks that you're looking at what kind of birds are made up in that flock. You can tell by looking at the scratchings that you're finding of what kind of uh, flock you're looking at. A lot of hens and poults will scratch out in the open woods. A lot of the gobblers and jakes will scratch in close to uh, logs and in close to bases of stumps and trees. Um, you can tell by the difference of the, the, the scat that you're finding. Uh, gobbler scat is long J hook. Hen and poult is more clumpy and round. So that, that's real important to once you get a flock broke up to know and how you're gonna call to them and what, you're, what type of calls you're gonna make to them. In the fall, generally what we run into is four different flocks, four different flock types. You can run into uh, hens with poults, 
and you could have anywhere from one to five hens with all, all, all of them in that flock will have poults. They will not let a barren hen that does not have poults join their flock, and that's for safety reasons. Um, a mother hen has a lot invested in her poults, in her brood. Uh, she will die protecting them. Um, a hen without poults, it is out for itself, and as soon as it sees a predator, it's going to start alarm putting, and it's not going to care other than anything about itself getting out of there. So that's the first flock. The second flock, you have barren hens that do not have any, any poults at all. Then you have the old gobbler flocks, and then you get later on into the year, you start running into those mixed flocks where they start uh, mid-November. End of November, you start finding the flocks that are, uh, that are all coming together where you start having the, the gobbler flock and the hen poult flock. They'll start coming together in November, December. So it's important once, once you know like, all the spots that I get. I got written permission to be there or it's public land. I'll have a pretty good idea of what type of flock are in that particular woods and um, we'll pull in, we'll park, and we'll jump out, we'll grab our gear, our guns, and um, I'll throw a shock collar on. I, got a, I run a Tritrolix shock collar on my dogs for two reasons. One is if they're starting to cross the road and I need to stop them because they're going after turkeys and I have to shock them, I'll shock them to stop them, but most generally I don't have to. This collar also has a beeper button in it that I can sound this beeper button and when I sound this beeper button come here well no I know couldn't resist the popcorn <laughs> when I sound that beeper button she could be out 200 yards 500 yards as soon as she hears that tone button beeping in her collar she will that as good as me saying Kinsey here and when I when that beeper button's going off, she will turn and she will come back and find me. The other thing that I run on these dogs is a Garmin uh, tracking collar. She wears this. This thing beams off of satellites and off of radio signals. And it sends a signal back to a GPS that I carry that is uh, handheld that updates every six seconds. And I know it, it tells me direction of north, south, east, west, whether she is... 20 yards or 500 yards or two miles and this will, this thing will go out to as far as about four miles um, which I, I don't let them get that far about the farthest that I care to have these guys is they get to 500 yards I'm starting to get a little bit nervous um, just for the simple reason a lot of the property that I hunt in Ohio is I might have 100 acres here I might have 200 acres here 500 acres 50 acres. I can't have them running onto somebody else's property where they're not supposed to be. And you know what? How many people here have ever heard of fall turkey hunting with dogs? Just, just a couple guys. One of the biggest fears is that in, in, in a society today that people see dogs running deer that they could shoot at them or whatever. Um, I don't want one of my dogs going in and breaking up a flock of turkeys and thinking that, you know, the dogs are going what they're supposed to do and somebody bow hunting thinking, this dog's breaking turkeys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shot at it and get it out of here. So, I don't want her going off a of property that I'm not allowed to be on. So, I'm real, real strict with trying to keep tight range, tight leashes on these guys. And this, this tracking unit helps me do that. It just keeps her in check. And I can, la I have SD cards that are loaded into this thing. That it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's got all the roads. It's got gasful roads. It's got driveways it's got fields it's got ponds it's got it's got everything on here so that the the map page shows an icon on here and it will show me and an icon of where she's at in relation to a road or a river or a creek whatever um so that if they're heading for a road i can stop them you know um and this thing comes into a lot of help too when uh these dogs go into a flock of turkeys we'll walk down through the woods and we'll just be talking and carrying on. It's, this is a, a great way to introduce kids to hunting, is fall turkey hunting, particularly with dogs. We'll walk down through the woods just like we're having a conversation, carrying on, walking and talking. And uh, my dogs are trained to course out anywhere from 100 to 500 yards. They come back and check in every three to five minutes. They gotta check in with me, make visual contact, run by me, and they sweep, they sweep on down through the woods. I try and use wind direction to my advantage. Um, if the wind's coming out of the west, 
I like to try and head into the woods on the east end of the woods and kind of work our way into the wind. It helps them find the turkeys a lot easier. Um, they are capable of cold trailing a turkey. You know, if a flock comes through a given area, uh, within about a half hour, they can, they can track them and, and find them running down there. Most generally, the way this works with these dogs, and I've, and I've seen them, it's, it's amazing how far they can win a flock of turkeys. In training several of my dogs, I drive around and I look for flocks to, to release them on so that I know that there's a particular flock you know, where they're at. And there's been several times where I found a flock that was down over a creek up on a rise that was a good three to 500 yards away. I keep them on a leash and walk them down, get them somewhat close. And when we're walking in downwind of that flock, I have seen these guys actually win that flock and know that they're there the way that they're posturing and acting. At, at over 300 yards. So it, it's pretty cool how far they can, if you use the wind to, to, your, to your advantage. Now there are some things that, uh, equations that figure into it that, that take away from their nose. And last year we had a real dry fall. It was real, real, real dry. Uh, not a lot of moisture in the air. And anybody that runs dogs knows that that really, really take, takes away from it to, you know, quite a bit. But for the most part, they, uh, they can win the flock at quite a ways away. So we'll walk along. They're running out, checking in, checking in, running out, checking in. And uh, all of a sudden, they're gone. And I'll, I'll be watching them on a the GPS. And as soon as they find that flock, they will start barking. And uh, a lot of times, they may only be 100 yards away. And there's times where they're 500 yards away. And not every time, but a good portion of the time they start barking we'll just stand there and start listening and looking and you may hear turkeys putting uh, you may see a bird fly by you may see a bird run by uh, my dogs are trained to circle that scatter site and any turkey that a lot of times they'll split the flock the first time they hit that flock maybe half of them will go into the air this way and that way and five will run this way, five will run this way, two will run back by us. They'll circle that scatter site and they'll pick up all those birds that ran in different directions. And they will run those birds down and it may take them 500 yards straight to the west to get, catch those birds and get them in the air. They'll come back and work that scatter site and they'll run those birds that went to the north down. They'll, they'll catch up with those birds and get them in the air. We want, we want a complete scatter as far away as we can get them. Um, I want I, is what I don't want is I don't want three or four together already before we even get started. I want them completely separated. A lot of times, like I said, if you see one run, run by you or fly, fly over you, if you can get a good look at it, uh, try and determine whether it is a, uh, a poult or a hen or if it's a gobbler uh, or jakes. And that will help when we go to set up and start our calling. Um, once the scatter's all done and we're kind of moved up into the area, and this thing's what, you know, this helps us there because the first time she barks, I look to see exactly where she's at. If she's 250 yards northeast of me, we're heading straight to that direction. And like I said, it's got a map page on here so I can go right to exactly where she was at when she, when she first started break, uh, breaking the turkeys. That, that's somewhat important. Um, the turkeys, when they start getting broke up, they want to, they want to get back together and they're going to come back to the last known spot that they were together with the rest of their, their flock mates. Um, <clears throat> so we want to try and get into that spot, um, figure out once I get into that spot roughly where she started breaking them at. And you can be within 100 yards, 150 yards off of the initial break site. And the reason why I say that is when I, when I go into an area, if it was a wide open pin oak grove or a wide open beech grove, I start looking for those edges, um, travel corridors like I, I'd like to call them. If you go into a woods and everybody's seen it, you'll see a row of trees that kind of run like this or there's a little thicket that runs like this. I want to find another little row of trees or a little edge that runs this way. You find that intersection point and that's going to be the best spot to set up. As long as you're within 150 yards of that initial scatter point, you're going to be pretty good. A lot of times what happens is in turkeys when they start regrouping, they like to walk down those edges coming to you. And 
at the hint of any danger, they can just dart into that little thicket and, and they're, they're gone. They, they're not trapped in the wide open woods. Um, so anyways, once we get set up, this is the bag that I put her in. Um, usually, right after they're done breaking turkeys, I'm, I'm still trying to get set up with my vest and I'm getting sat on the ground trying to set down. I set that bag down on the ground and they're so excited because they know what's going to happen. They, uh, they're fighting to try and get into the bag before I'm even ready for them. Come here, Kins. Come on, right here. Sit down. Sit down. Good girl. I just demonstrate how we can just pretty much make her disappear. I know it's going through her head. I didn't break any turkeys. What are you doing? Okay. Oh, sit down. There you go. Lay down. Come on. Lay down. Good. Oh. Well, you guys get the point. She, uh... This isn't the real thing. This isn't the... She, she's got an idea that, hey, you know what? I didn't break any turkeys. I don't know why you're doing this, but... You know what? They're so used to... They're so used to... Once they break turkeys up, that they're fighting me to get in the bag. Because the one thing with my dogs that I, I, I don't do is I don't hold them after a shot. As soon as we get set up, I might have two two or three guys sitting there with me. I, I asked them to load one shell in their gun, one shell only. Um, there's gonna be plenty of opportunities, usually on a big break. So if you miss, it's not a big deal. There's, there's probably gonna be three, four, five, eight more ch you know, chances at a turkey coming back in to get another shot. As soon as somebody shoots, I ask the other two guys to put their gun straight in the air because you're not stopping them coming out of the bag. And I don't try to stop them coming out of the bag. I want them going out and jumping on that turkey. And what happens a lot of times too is um, they may run right by that dead turkey because there was three or four more turkeys coming in at the same time behind them. And they're gonna go right back out there and just scatter them, start breaking those turkeys up again. I, I want them broke up as long as I can keep them broke up. Um, which is, which is the whole point of trying to, you, you keep them separated, they want back together. Um, one, one of the things, like I said at the very beginning, is knowing that flock, knowing the composition of the flock. Uh, if it's hens and poults, we do a lot of key can, whistling. If it's a, a, all adult hens, we'll do a lot of yelping at them. And if it is gobblers, we do a lot of gobbler yelping. Uh, gobbler yelping, gobbler clucking. And, there have been times when we didn't see any birds at all and I start key keying, whistling and key keying and uh, if within 45 minutes that I don't have a, I'm not hearing anything and we're not having any, any birds responding, um, I'll switch it up and start throwing in a gobbler yelp. And uh, a lot of times that, that'll end up, that, that'll change the deal. Because if you get a, if you got a break on a bunch of gobblers, they're not going to come back in to key can unless it was a, unless it was a, uh, Unless it was a mixed flock, a big mixed flock, and, and that's happened. We broke up mixed flocks and had gobblers walk into the key can. But in general, if it's an all gobbler flock, you're not going to call them in whistling and key can to them. So you want to you want to just try and mix that up. Um, a lot of uh, I'll demonstrate a little bit of uh, some gobbler yelping. And I'll start out with some hen yelping. A lot of times for the for the the um, the all hen group that doesn't have any poults with it. Just like in a spring, you can hard yelp at them, you can cluck hard at them, and they'll respond just fine to that. And then, if we're not getting any response to that, and I'm thinking maybe that was a, an adult gobbler group or even a bunch of jakes, then we'll switch it up and do a little bit of gobbler yelping. Gobbler yelping is is slower, coarser, a little bit harsher yelp, yelping. 
Uh, it's not as pretty as the hen yelps. And uh, how many of you guys have ever heard hens whistling? Can you can? Oh, come here. Stay here. Come here. When we're trying to reassemble um, hens and bolts, and it, actually I should say it, that it's more hens because um, because um, you're not gonna you're not gonna call the mother you're not gonna call the mother hen in the the brood hen, and if we did call the brood hen in, I I probably wouldn't let you shoot it, uh, just for the simple reason that that brood hen if you shoot one of the brood hens in a hen bolt flock there's a pretty good chance that the rest of them are going to pretty much be... That brood hen dictates where they go. Where, what food source they're going to, where they're going to, uh, how they're traveling, where they're roosting. And she is going to control that whole flock. And without that brood hen, there's, it gets pretty chaotic in, in that hen full flock. And there's a pretty good possibility that they'll start getting picked off by, by predators. So we're targeting the smaller poults that when we're, when we're hunting them. And it's just simply whistling out, keep in, keep you running. And you can, you can with the same call in your mouth, you can try and sound like two different turkeys answering one another, coming back together. Uh, with the decoys that we have, I try and put three or four decoys out right in front of us at 20 yards to make it look like that that flock is reconvening right in front of us. And you can change the pitch and, and make it sound like two different turkeys answering each other. And if you can't with a mouth call, then you can call with a mouth call and use a friction call and answer yourself with a friction call. Shell. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, uh, there are a lot of states that are coming on board with it now. Um, I believe Pennsylvania has been two years now. It's been, yeah, it was it was always that you could. Um, Ohio has been on board for quite a few years. Uh, New York is a big turkey dog in state, and uh, Virginia is huge. Kentucky. No, no, I don't know any state that you're allowed to use dogs in the springtime. They're just a fall, it is just specifically for fall. Yes. Yep. Um, in Ohio, the one thing that we are allowed to do now with dogs in the spring is if you wound a gobbler, you can keep a dog on a leash and try and track the gobbler, with, you know, to, to recover it. So, which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like that idea. But, um, just, just, just specifically only in the fall. Your busy time is coming up now? Uh, our season starts a week from Monday in Ohio. Uh, last year, this weekend, I was in Pennsylvania kicking it off. Or not Pennsylvania, uh, New York kicking it off. Their season started this weekend. Uh, or actually, I think it started October 1st. Um, and uh, September, Michigan, I hunt Michigan quite a bit. The very end of September, Michigan's fall season's already in and underway. Uh, a guy that Tracy Green and I go to hunt with every year, that uh, he's already killed some birds. They're, they've been on and they're going real, real, real well already. Yeah, real well. I, I pressed them out and we eat quite a few of them, but I have several people that I work with that love turkey breasts and I give them you know, between spring and fall and hunt. Like this year, I'll hunt just in the fall this year and I'm actually down this year. Normally I'm hunting five states. This year I'm only hunting three, West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Uh, and then I'm hunting three to five states in the spring. So we usually got turkey breasts coming out of our, our, our you know, like crazy. So I give quite a few of them away. I give quite a few of them away. We've got a uh, rescue mission that I've donated a lot of the deer to that we shoot um, up around our house for uh, homeless families. Um, 
it's, 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 there's some really neat programs that you can utilize, you know. So. I got four, three of which are cookie dogs. Um, this is my youngest. She's in training now. Uh, last fall, she wasn't quite a year old for her first fall season, and she was in on 11 successful hunts last year. Uh, the the other two that I have home that are turkey dogs, the one is 11 and the other one is 8. And uh, Cricket, my, my 8 year old Burns dog, she is, I'll tell you what, I'd probably put her up against any, any dog in the country. She is pretty fun. Um, yeah, and you know what, it's real easy for me where I live at. I, I own five acres and you step out my back door, it's it's a huge backyard and 30 yards into my backyard I got a pond and all of my dogs swim as good as any lap. Um, even I've got a German Shepherd that can swim back straight in the water, tail, tail like a rudder and just, just moving right along, just, you know, it's real, real cool. My veterinarian does a lot of hunting with me and he said that for exercising for dogs, particularly in the summer, uh, even in the early fall, swimming is really, really good exercise for dogs because it's real low impact. You know, it's real low impact on their joints and it's uh, it's uh, it's really, really, really good. And with this, you know, my, my other two at home, they're getting up there a little bit in age. They're high strung, they're hyper. They, they run a lot, they like to be exercised a lot. They're starting to slow down now. This one here, if she doesn't run every other day, if I don't do something every other day, you know, all my dogs are indoor dogs. They, uh, there's not peace in the house. You know what I mean? So you, you just gotta, you gotta keep, keep the peace. Oh, she come up? Okay. Yep. Yep. If you guys have any more questions, come over and see us at the food, please. Thank you.